Now, from WYDC-TV, this is Big Fox News at 10. Good evening, I'm Ann Emanuel. A cryptocurrency mining plant in Dresden is under scrutiny tonight after allegations their site is leading to wildlife endangerment. Big Fox's Josh Feldberg tells us people are now calling on state environmental agencies to address the issue sooner rather than later. Greenage Generations is a cryptocurrency mining facility that intakes over 100 million gallons of water through a water intake pipe from Seneca Lake every day. Water intake pipes like the one at Greenage Generations are supposed to have fish screens or other wildlife protective measures to prevent wildlife from getting caught in the pipeline. This pipe has been allowed to operate without a fish screen by the state in violation of federal law since 2017. The water from the lake is used to cool the turbines used to generate the electricity for thousands of computers used in the cryptocurrency mining process. The plant then pumps the water back into Seneca Lake at temperatures over 100 degrees that could damage both the ecosystem of the lake and our drinking water. Greenage had until the end of September to install the screens, but the DEC has moved the deadline back to January 20, 2023. One group that has been fighting against the facility for months is the Seneca Lake Guardian. Yvonne Taylor, vice president of the Seneca Lake Guardian, stated, They've had five years to comply with the law, but instead this corporate bully has chosen to kill our fish, pollute our air, and threaten our $3 billion, 60,000 job agro-tourism economy just to make a few people richer. Officials from Greenwich Generation issued a statement that states, We have already invested $6 million into fulfilling our permit obligations, and we look forward to finishing our work in the weeks ahead. According to the DEC, the plant located in Dresden will have until late January to install the best technology available to reduce the impacts of the cooling water intake system. Josh Feldberg, Big Fox News, Dresden. An Ithaca homeowner stopped a burglary today that left the suspect in the hospital. Around 1.45 this morning, police responded to a burglary on Pine Street where the homeowner had stopped a burglary and gave officers a description of the suspect. The suspect was later found by Ithaca police and airlifted to a trauma center with non-life-threatening injuries. The state police have issued a scam alert. An individual with a 607 area code has been reportedly contacting people and asking for donations for the state police. The New York State Police does not solicit money by phone. Police warn the public against giving the caller any sort of personal information. Police advise the public to hang up immediately if you receive one of these calls. The Pennsylvania State Police report incidents of people jumping off wind turbines in Johnston. Police report that several individuals have been seen jumping off the turbines owned by RWE Renewables Americas. The people were allegedly base jumping. That's a recreational sport of jumping from fixed objects using a parachute to get safely to the ground. Police report that 33-year-old Bader Abulaban was arrested in regards to the incident. The investigation is ongoing. A new mural has joined the streets of Elmira today. Our Maggie Hall was at its unveiling to find out what the Love Mural is all about. There's a new mural in the city of Elmira. The love mural that you can see behind me here was unveiled earlier today by artist Philomena Jack and Elmira Infant and Canvas. Elmira Infinite Canvas is a community arts of Elmira public art program that can be seen throughout the city. Councilman Brent Sturmer is in partnership with the community arts of Elmira. Uh, it has been a push of community arts of Elmira and a push of the city of Elmira. We want public art. We want people to come. We want them to take pictures. We want them to post to social media. We want them to come and see our spaces. The love mural can be found on West 2nd Street on the viaduct wall. I asked Philomena what creating a mural like this means to her. It's a life stream. I, my plan is to help as many people in the world as possible. And one of the ways that we can do that here with Elmira Infinite Canvas is through public art. Not everyone's going to go to a museum or seek out art on their own. So we're bringing it to people so they can experience it every single day. The Community Arts Foundation is looking for artists to fill the city with murals. Artists are culture bearers. When people talk about Elmira, they may 
mention something that they know of in their community, but let's let them talk about the art all throughout our community. Maybe all you really need is love. To get involved with Elmira Infinite Canvas, you can email info at communityartsofelmira.com. Maggie Hall, Big Fox News, Elmira. A three-quarter sized replica of the Vietnam Veterans Memorial is coming to Sayre this week. The traveling memorial known as the Wall That Heals arrived in Sayre today and will take two days to set up. An opening ceremony for the wall will take place Thursday, October 6th at 6 p.m. The wall will be on continuous public display from 6 p.m. Thursday through 2 p.m. on October 9th. Market Street's West End Gallery has two new exhibits coming to its walls. The first is a collection of new paintings by Tom Gardner and Martin A. Poole. It will be displayed in the downstairs gallery. The second will be a tribute to the late Thomas S. Buckner, which will be displayed in the upstairs gallery. There will be an open reception on Friday, October 14th. The event will go from 5 to 7 at the gallery. Utility crews are racing to restore power to thousands across southwest Florida, while other residents are cleaning out their homes from Ian. Robert Ray has more. Nearly a week after Ian slammed into southwest Florida, hundreds of thousands are facing another day without power. I've had no internet, no cable, no nothing. Florida's largest power utility estimates electricity could be fully restored by the end of the week to customers who still have power lines and electrical infrastructure intact. We've been able to get a lot of folks up quickly because we're in the middle of clean, clean areas, all the debris. The situation is even more dire on the hard hit barrier islands. Here in Lee County, Ian washed away bridges and roads, making it difficult for utility crews to assess the damage. Efforts are underway to build temporary bridges to Pine Island and Sanibel. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis says National Guard helicopters will be flying in supplies and linemen to assist residents who stayed behind. You just need to get people on there and they need to start doing what needs to be done, clearing roads, clear, and we are working on the roads and all that now. Across southwest Florida, residents are beginning to clean up after Ian's floodwaters soaked their homes. Water levels still remain high across much of the region. Officials expect recovery from this storm to take months if not years. It was just like Noah's Ark. You didn't know how high the water was going to come. When it started coming in, we didn't know when it was going to stop. Tomorrow, the president and first lady will travel here to see the devastation firsthand. In Fort Myers, Robert Ray, Fox Weather. Your complete forecast is next. Plus, how farmers across the country are dealing with the drought impact on wheat products. Stay with us. Here's your local stock market update from Big Fox. Your Twin Tiers forecast from Big Fox. The extent of the cloud cover and rainy conditions did return across portions of New York and Pennsylvania. Now you can see those low lying clouds here across Binghamton and we did see that what's in place is that we still are dealing with the energy of remnants of Hurricane Ian. So the National Weather Service Weather Prediction Center tweeted out this photo showing that what we have is we have that lingering surface low pressure system associated with the remnants of Ian. But then that is now being stacked on top with an upper level low pressure system. And when you have this sitting in place, really these storms all they want to do is continue to build that low pressure system deep in it and not make much movement especially when it hugs these coastal areas it allows for that topography to kind of keep it just outside of the waters creating some rough sea conditions all the way from North Carolina all the way up through Connecticut but it's also continuing to keep much of southern portions of New York and Pennsylvania under this rainy and gloomy weather pattern now the good news is is that trends are starting to pull this system out as we step through the overnight and into our Wednesday forecast so some 
decreasing cloud cover and you see a little bit more of that northwesterly wind in place at times. So it's showing that there's some receding of that cloud cover, but overall still going to stay on the cooler side, but not as cool as the last few nights. Cloud cover will help to restrict some of those 30 degree low temperatures, although we'll flirt with it just around average though for Elmira and Corning falling just about 41 to 43, which average for this time of the year is about 42. So gradually through the day, we'll still see some passing cloud cover, maybe shaking a shower out or two, but definitely trying to quiet up that weather powder. We'll see a few areas, especially depending on how much sunshine we work in in the early morning hours, some 70s possible on Wednesday, but widespread 70s will be more likely on Thursday ahead of a frontal system that is expected to bring us more rain and cooler weather as we step into the weekend. So trending into our Wednesday, what we'll see again is still some of those effects of that low pressure system. It's not making strong movements, but it's making some. So as we look through the overnight, this is 1 a.m. You still see a few showers there across portions of New York, but as you head into Wednesday afternoon, more of that amplification is more towards New York City and across New Jersey and then just hitting areas of Williamsport through Scranton of Pennsylvania. So some cloud cover in a stray shower or two possible, but brighter skies should start to work their way in and allow for a few of those 70s to start to pop up and be at least seasonal for this time of the year. As we step into Wednesday, as we'll have more all day sunshine, a little bit warmer overnight temperatures, we'll see that we'll have the chance for more of these widespread 70s all the way through the Finger Lakes and down through Pennsylvania. But then the cold front is going to be coming from the Great Lakes, and that's where a switch in the weather pattern will come. As we'll stay rainy, that will suppress those temperatures into the 60s, and then the cold front will drop in those cooler temperatures, 55 only on Saturday. And we're looking at widespread frost and freeze concerns throughout the weekend forecast. However, it does look like after those scattered showers on Friday, we should see a high pressure system allow for some brighter skies and gradual warming as we step into next week. Drought conditions are having a major impact on wheat farmers in the southwest. And as farmers try to save their crops, scientists at Oklahoma State University are looking for solutions to help farmers through the toughest weather conditions. Jamison Kefover has more. Dusty conditions across western Oklahoma, leaving wheat farmer Jared Wadle's 4,500 acres of land bare. We could put a seed in the ground, but it's not going to grow because it has no moisture. The weird world is standing right now would normally be grass a foot tall. More than 6,500 wheat farmers across the state are experiencing the same frustrations. And for Wadle, it's more than just a business. I'm a fourth generation farmer of this area. Uh, my granddad, my dad, my great granddad, now me, uh, have all lived, farmed and ranched in this area. Uh, for going on a pinch over 100 years at this point in time. His family also runs a cattle ranch on the land. With no grass for grazing, they're spending more on hay than usual, all while making less from a smaller wheat harvest this year. All the forecasts and predictions are pretty much predicting a continuation of abnormally dry weather. Researchers want to help farmers get their seed into the ground, even during these dry conditions. But starting with this, learning the most they can about different varieties to better help Oklahoma producers. Oklahoma State University's wheat improvement team is developing drought and disease resistant wheat varieties. That's where we are investing our resources and our time. It's doing the best we can to prepare for future um, climate change. But a variety of wheat could take more than a decade to develop. There are a lot of research going on now in doing the best we can to prepare. We're kind of limited just because wheat hasn't had the research and the funding that other crops have had. But obviously the folks at OSU know exactly what they're doing. Wadle is letting the dust settle and says he'll get something in the ground as soon as rain moves in as his family's land depends on it. Well, electric cars can be a sustainable way of reducing greenhouse gas emissions. But making electric cars from sustainable materials is a double-edged sword in the fight to reduce climate change. Jackie Ibanez has a look at the electric cardboard cars that could be dominating the roadways in just a few years. Cars made from cardboard. It sounds far-fetched, but French automaker Citroën says it's the way of the future revealing its latest electric car model called Ali, which promises to help combat the ongoing climate crisis. We have to uh, manage the climate uh, global warming. In the meantime, uh, families still need to be uh, mobile and to have this freedom of mobility. The roof, pickup bed and hood are all made from a special honeycomb cardboard reinforced with a plastic coating. They're all lighter than the same parts on traditional vehicles without compromising strength. We could climb all together on the roof without any issue. 
Another aim at making Ollie more sustainable? Officials say they reduced unnecessary features typical in cars. Some features are used less than 10-2% of the time. So we said, okay, how can we reduce to what is really uh, necessary for day-to-day -day life uh, with our customers? And uh, doing that, we reduce the number of electronic boards, the number of uh, features that may be not completely uh, useful. This helps reduce the amount of electricity the cars consume. The windows also open manually and the windshield is vertical instead of tilted, reducing the car's internal temperature. Less parts, less weight, less impact on the planet. Officials say Ollie can last for about 50 years and can be recycled at the end of its life. Ollie is expected to go on sale by 2030 for a price of around $25,000. Well, Crocs is giving away free pairs of shoes as it celebrates its 20th anniversary. The footwear brand is giving away tens of thousands of pairs of shoes this week. Fans can enter for a chance to win on the Crocs website or app. Winners will be chosen daily. The contest lasts through October 7th. The footwear brand even renamed the month calling it Croctober. Still ahead, more and more states are allowing students to take mental health days. Why implementing this could be beneficial for struggling students coming up. More and more states are allowing students to take mental health days. Some parents in Massachusetts would like their state to offer the same, saying children's mental health needs to be taken seriously. Bria Douglas reports. For the second year in a row, students return to class with COVID-19 as part of their routine, and not every kid has coped well. According to the CDC, emergency room visits for suspected suicide attempts increased during the pandemic. Some parents I talked to say children's mental health has to be taken seriously. Well, I think mental health is critical. Uh, it seems to be a crisis for, for many, many people. And so if parents or administrators in a school or teachers in a school uh, suspect that, that uh, students need uh, intervention for mental health, they absolutely should have uh, the time off uh, without any penalty. Twelve states provide mental health days for students, including Maine and Connecticut. No word yet if that will be implemented in Massachusetts, too. But one mom thinks it could be beneficial for struggling students. I think children should be able to have some time off if they need to take time off for whatever might be troubling the child, you know, whether it's trauma or something going on in the home or something like that, and they do need a mental health break. Oh, I think it's huge. If they go to school with so much anxiety and they can't even think straight or um, listen to the teachers, so if they stay home and just get a reboot, I think it would be great for them. Listen to this. A new study finds that white rice and pasta are as harmful to the heart as candy. Analysts studied the responses of 2,500 people with normal arteries and some with coronary artery disease. Participants answered a food frequency questionnaire to determine how often they ate whole and refined grains. Researchers found a higher intake of refined grain like white rice and pasta was associated with an increased risk of premature coronary artery disease. An author of the study says consuming a high amount of refined grains can be similar to eating a lot of unhealthy oils and sugars. Well, some cheese products sold at major retailers are being recalled because of a possible hysteria outbreak. The Food and Drug Administration says Old Europe Cheese is recalling its brie and camembert cheeses. The recall products have best buy dates from September 28, 2022 through December 14, 2022. They were, they were distributed between August 1st through September 28th. The affected cheeses were sold at retailers including Whole Foods, Albertsons and Safeway. Way. The FDA says it links six cases of listeria to a strain found in samples taken from an old Europe cheese facility. Eligible families who have not claimed the child tax credit still have more time to use a simple tool to file. The deadline to use the website getctc.org is November 15th. Officials say it helps make it easier for families to file for the funds. They can receive up to $3,600 per child under six years and $3,000 per child under 18. The November deadline is only for filing using the tool. Eligible families still have up to three years after the first due date to receive the tax credit, but it will be a longer process. Roughly 4 million people who qualify for the child tax credit have yet to claim it as of last year. 
Stay with us. We'll have more after the break. What are you doing with your piggy bank? Sending it to people in need in Florida because they have a hurricane and their office is going to go down and they need more stuff. And we want to leave you with a smile tonight. A young boy is doing his part to help Floridians recovering from Hurricane Ian. Video posted to social media by the boy's mother shows him talking about his plan to donate all the money in his piggy bank to help those impacted or left with nothing following the storm. He admits that he planned to save up for a Corvette or an electric scooter, but said, quote, people need this. I'm Harriet Wallace. Thanks so much for watching.